Greetings. This week, the question I was most commonly asked by listeners was for my opinion or analysis about the resignation of the president of the State University of New York College at Oneonta. This small school in central New York is facing nearly 750 coronavirus cases and is the site of what may be the worst coronavirus outbreak in the United States in higher education. Stay tuned. Here's the background. SUNY Oneonta began to attract national attention when it confirmed over 670 positive cases, more than a tenth of the student population, in the first few weeks it was open during the fall semester. This made it the worst on-campus outbreak in New York State, and by some measures, the worst in the country. The campus had no option other than to revert to remote learning, and then the finger-pointing began. Students and employees alike both pointed to what they regarded as an inadequate screening system for incoming students, an inadequate monitoring system for students after they arrived, and further asserted that the college had not done enough to discourage off-campus student social functions, and even permitted smaller groups to get together on campus without adequate prevention measures in place. It certainly didn't help that online pictures like this one emerged of infected students partying in isolation dorms. All of this led to the first national coverage of the first college presidential resignation due to poor COVID results. If you know of another earlier one, please let me know. On October 15th, President Barbara Jean Morris announced she was resigning amid relentless criticism in the local, regional, and national press. First, let me talk about what may be appropriate and fair about this resignation. It's not complicated, and what I'm gonna talk about are familiar concepts, both inside and outside of higher education. The president is the leader of the organization, the CEO. The organization likely has a board. In the case of the SUNY schools, there is a central statewide governing board, and there is a local advisory board. Obviously, in a system with over 60 campuses, it's not realistic for the state board to be responsible for the individual events or decisions on the local campus, except to hold the manager they hired to manage that campus responsible for his or her decisions. Because of this, presidents understand that the buck stops with them when it comes to campus management. I don't really know what the workable alternative is to holding the president accountable for what happens on campus. Sometimes that accountability may be very high when events are entirely within the president's control, and sometimes the accountability may be less when there is a complex interplay of internal and external factors. But in all cases, there will be accountability for the president at the very least for the institution's response to events that occur to be and sorry that occur and are also in the institution's control let me talk next about what may be unfair about a resignation first the specific circumstances of an event might mean that the level of accountability of the president may simply not rise to the level where he or she must depart the school There are occasionally massive, tragic events that occur in college campuses. Thankfully, these are relatively rare, and in many cases, they do not lead to the departure of the CEO. That's because the context matters. Sometimes presidents leave, voluntarily or involuntarily, even though the circumstances just don't warrant it. The second unfairness that arises is when the fate of the president becomes a narrative in itself, sometimes the main narrative and therefore actually becomes the context. Something bad happens on a college campus, the president is partly blamed, people believe the president should leave, and suddenly the primary conversation shifts from the negative event that originally happened to the fate of the president. When this happens, the president's ability to lead the campus is hampered, sometimes to the point of ineffectiveness. The mayor of Oneonta said when interviewed, There had been some loss of trust here amongst both the college community and the city community. Trust is everything. Sometimes you need to make changes in order to rebuild trust. This can happen to any manager, from U.S. presidents to your local city manager. And when it does happen, there may be circumstances where the experienced people, the president included, look at the situation and recognize that the facts of the original event are now not the primary issue and it may be necessary for the president to step aside so the institution can begin a new positive narrative or context. This can be really difficult for the president, especially in cases where he or she believes 
that the original event just doesn't warrant this outcome. As a college president who resigned his own position to take a different one, I can tell you from personal experience that it's hard to leave even if there isn't some specific event that precipitates your departure. So in the case where a president feels he or she must leave due to circumstances for which he or she doesn't feel responsible, or worse, because the narrative has shifted away from the original events to now simply the fate of the president, it can seem very unfair. This case, however, isn't unfair. Oneonta, New York has two colleges, SUNY Oneonta and Hartwick College, a private school. Hartwick College took an aggressive stance and implemented stringent measures. It remains open and as of October 24th had 26 cases. SUNY Oneonta took a passive stance and suffered the consequences. 719 cases as of this, the same day, with the campus finally being closed to students. The situation was preventable, and the president certainly made the final decision about, and set the tone for, how the campus would approach the pandemic. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, now's the time to hit the like and subscribe buttons below, as well as the notification bell so you'll be notified when more videos come out. Thanks. As always, I enjoy the opportunity to talk with you about these important issues. I appreciate your questions, and I hope this information has been helpful to you. I look forward to talking with you again next week.